I saw the Jamie George posts and people complaining about Jamie George coming into camp. People immediately jump to a conclusion, don't they? I think he said, didn't he, like, see what I could learn from them as much as them from me. I actually messaged him when he put our squad up and was like buzzing to see this or something. And I was like, oh, thank you. Like, that means so much. How much it means to them as much as how much when they play it means to us is huge. Basically, an Italian shirt minus their emblem and sponsors was a joke how buzzing you were that you wore the blue shirt and that we commented on it. That was the bit that got me. I wasn't too offended until then. It's too easy, guys. I do have a pair of leather trousers. I've worn them once. Will I wear them again? I'm unsure. I've spent the last three days with this girl and she's been bottling it up for this podcast, <laughs> I swear to God. Welcome to the Good, the Scars and the Rugby, brought to you by our friends from Vodafone. I'm back from Edinburgh. Uh, in the studio with Katie Daddy McLean. Hello. Hi, KDM. Um, we will catch up with our Scars and Mo in a bit. Um, they also didn't get to go to Scotland. I am having all of the fun right now. Got a suntan as well. That's definitely not from Scotland. Wind Windburn. This is from sitting outside in London on Sunday when I had the bra. It was very nice. Scotland, they are not braying yet. I can tell you that because the wind was coming from very many directions and the rain from the ground up as well. Brian Eason showed me up by just strolling around in the thinnest long sleeve top man has ever worn. Mm. And I felt like he could have just pretended with me that it was really cold. <laughs> Did you show your South African roots by any chance? Yeah, I think he laughed at me a little bit and went, let me show her. Let me show her. That's how we do it up here. Uh, what did you make of the Scottish girls? Oh, you can't not like them, can you? Played, obviously, with Rona at Loughborough. They're just good eggs. And I think anybody who listens to the pod, that is very much them. Mm. The way they conduct themselves, how warm they are. And it's, it's nice, I think, for me to see how well they're going in terms of their rugby because we always knew how capable they were, but they never, ever kind of got it across the line. But actually, like we've talked about WXV2, that result against Wales, it, it's really nice to see. They're a good group and it's probably what they what they deserve. What does Coach Katie Daly mclean think of Coach Brian Eason and what he told us? I think it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, what Scotland definitely are seem to be getting right is the culture around that squad. And I think for me, some of the interesting bits was how he described their space. So them having their own space. I think he talked about the change room and their team room. And definitely in squads I've been in, one of the biggest things that some of our coaches, especially our male coaches struggled with, was how different a, a girls change room can be. I think for us playing sevens or fifteens, it was very much light-hearted. There was a lot of noise, a lot of music, banging. Sometimes Disney tunes were on. Is this just you? Is it just because you were in I'm the generalizing team? I'm generalising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, actually, Mo, can t Mo was gen uh, DJ. So it was oh. A, yeah, so it was a oh. lot to do with Mo. Oh, okay. And Mo's choice of music, uh, sometimes questionable. <laughs> But I think that is probably a really good idea for them, isn't it? Or if for most squads, for the girls to have a space where they know they can be themselves, they don't need to worry about whether the coaches are judging or making opinions of change rooms and how they conduct themselves. Actually, there should be spaces where you're ready, however you do it, to get ready to play. Mm. And I think maybe that's part of the things that they're obviously getting right up there. I loved Philippa Tati and she texted me and she said, every squad says they're super tight, but I've never believed that is more true of any other squad than of this Scottish team. She said, I don't think I've ever wanted to play for another nation, but that Scottish camp sounds class and it is bordering on cultish, but they have absolutely embraced that tag that I gave them and they are running with it and their fans are turning up for it. I don't know how many of the people who bought tickets to go to the Hive Stadium this weekend are English, but I'm so here for that record crowd. 7,774 or something like that. Massive number. And Rachel Malcolm, when she posted that sold out graphic on her stories she said investment matters visibility matters which is just that's it there we go build it and they will come so true isn't it whoever said women's sport wasn't interesting mm -hmm. no one watches it uh, just like no one watches caitlin clark oh my goodness <laughs> those numbers to give you an idea the peak viewing figures reached 24 million viewers the highest on men's competition in the same league 
was something like 14. So they have just shot the lights out in so many real ways uh, in basketball in the US. And the groundswell of support obviously doesn't necessarily transfer, although if any of them wanted to watch rugby, we would love to have them. <laughs> but it just shows that I don't think the goals we should be setting for women's rugby is to do what the men's game have done. It is to grow its own legion of fans and then entertain them, enthrall them, capture their imaginations, create great opportunities for people to come and watch the sport and the rest will happen. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the audience is different. I think if you look at that Red Roses crowd last year when there's 55,000 at Twickenham, you're looking at the families. It is a much more family orientated day out. And if you watch Scotland's game from two weekends ago against mm -hmm. France, mm -hmm. there was a lot of young families, kids, boys, girls mm -hmm. in that crowd. Arona Lloyd and Emma Wassell and uh, Women Who Sport, I love the fact that they took up the conversation we had when we recorded the pod and made a travel guide for Edinburgh. Great tips on where to go get your pulled pork and your flat white and basically everything else uh, when you are in Edinburgh over the weekend. So go give uh, them a follow and a like and a share. We love that. Um, pushing local business as well. We're so here for it. Then, as I mentioned... It's time for us to quickly take a jump back, catch up with our scars no moan. They need to have a right of reply because Emma Wassell said some stuff. I don't know if anyone knows about the derriere comment. Um, and we managed to catch up with them in the fallow week. So here they are. And we go back to the future uh, fellow week check-in with our Skaz and Mo. They're here. We've been missing Hello. you on the show. Hi. I'm wearing red just for you. Thank well, you. It's two weeks makes too late. Makes a change, but... does it? Yeah. <laughs> are, you sure, are you sure it's not for Wales? <laughs> the Wales game is over now, but I do have my little Scotland hat right there. There she is. I actually have that beanie and it's incredibly comfortable, but just reversing slightly to the, the Italian top. I didn't think you would wear white or red. However, wearing like basically an Italian shirt minus their emblem and sponsors was a joke. I, I thought I did really well. I even matched the ribbon of the accreditation. The match day accreditation was the exact color of my shirt. Do you know why that was, Alma? Because it's the Italian colour. <laughs> that is why that was. <laughs> we have to provide balance. There's got to be a certain amount of independence. Also, as I said, my That's not independent. Name... Well, independent I mean... means neither one or the other. <laughs> that is the literal definition of independence. And also, I didn't even think too deeply of it until I listened to you up in Scotland camp, how buzzing you were that you wore the blue shirt and that we commented on it. That was the bit that got me. I wasn't too offended until then. It's too easy, guys. It really it did is. Feel, it did feel a bit like a setup. I was like wondering if like someone was filming but when we got sort of like bit on that. Yeah, just a, a little double take from you guys. Um, Nick Heath was absolutely fizzing for this. He was obviously the big stirrer. Um, but I have to take credit for the shirt color matching. Um, I was very, very happy with myself there. How did Morio and Skaz in the gladiator <laughs> outfit go down in camp? Because so many people have wanted to talk to me about that. The girls were like, what is this? And honestly, you just, we were in the changing rooms, um, like prepping to go out for our big session and you just heard it go off, like <laughs> loads in like loads of different pockets of the changing rooms. The girls were just like, go seriously. <laughs> Everyone was loving Skaz's slow walk though. And also the cut down when she's like, and an ancient rivers in England, like that wasn't actually part of the script. That was golden. That was so golden. I had quite a few people message me being like, be honest that's straight out of your like costume box because <laughs> of like my fancy dress stuff that i've worn in the past they're like no seriously like cb and nelly both messaged me being like no seriously that was already yours wasn't it emma wassell was not surprised she's the only person who went well obviously she got straight into character because buddy the elf hello uh we set the bar really high if she's gonna do dress up she's gonna kill it well yes <laughs> um, the bit that she missed out in that whole Buddy the Elf 
situation is that Wes cares about how she looks, like lots of people do, in a really good way. And she always looks fantastic. So for her to wear Buddy the Elf, I don't really care. But for her to wear Buddy the Elf, it was like a bit more of a thing because obviously it's a costume that doesn't really, in her words, give a huge amount. Um, so Wes really wanted to like just like tweak it a bit change the hair not wear the wig at all but I was really proud of her because she just did it flat out we were in the club room hacking at this wig to try and trim it down a little bit so it was almost like as terrible as possible I, but I think that made it look worse mate but that yeah, was the outcome was... desired yeah. yeah yeah sorry so how good is it uh, to be back in an England shirt Asghazi because we have actually not spoken to you since you did that yeah it was very cool um it was I guess a bit of a surreal thing like it's the first time I've ever had my name on the back of a 15 shirt which was quite cool obviously that came in over a year ago but I haven't played since then so um to have like receive your first shirt with a name on the back me and Abby Ward had a little moment at shirt presentation because I was like oh have you ever had your name on the back of a an England shirt she was like no and then she had a little moment bless her but things like that are really cool like sign of um the changing times and all that but also like it's your name isn't it i know you spoke to the scottish girls about it it's your name on the back of something so it's pretty cool that's a special one i love that very cool to have a back are we talking about yeah. the achilles or what? i don't really know it's a frustrating one um it was almost like i've had tendon issues like for most of my career but this one's just hitting a bit different and it's really frustrating it was almost like it knew we were coming back to play so after having like months and months of really good running and really good training and feeling really good then that first week back to almost play and it was like oh we're back I'm back perfect and then it's just kind of gone a bit downhill since then it's yeah starting to struggle with it so had a little intervention over the weekend was in a boot for a bit and had an injection so hopefully that's going to help but yeah we'll just see bit of a bit of a frustrating one oh we're touching all the wood aren't we mate I was going to say, Mo, what were you doing to your face there? I was like... Touching wood. Oh, I was oh, touching wood. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. It's like, do you also have an injury? Not an obvious one. Ouchie? I don't know what happened yeah. there. No. And then the big other thing that happened in Italy was uh, Molly Packer getting that golden cap. I saw such a nice picture of the two of you, Mo. Um, there, there was just so many really heartwarming moments, I feel like, in that opening game and it now feels like an age ago but I'm guessing there wasn't the biggest party for party back at ironically no there wasn't really at all was there obviously um we do a little thing in the change rooms post matches now which is something that Mitch has brought in um which is really cool just to like reconnect us and she had a moment with her family on pitch I think she had 10 to 15 of her family fly out which was awesome to see so many people and um Julie Packer is like one of mum's best mates. They ended up on the same hotel at the first under 20 tour we ever did together. So know Julie really, really well as well. So to have her present, I think it was the the little um, trophy cap to her was super special. And um, yeah, just to see her get that accolade is, is fantastic. And obviously to do it while you're captain in your country as well is pretty epic. So yeah. Hats off. The Packers, the Packers definitely had a party, but I don't yeah. think Marley did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To our knowledge, anyway. I was so excited about having some ham with you guys, but I ended up out on the town with my crew because you guys were hanging with the Italian girls. Yeah, what do you mean having some ham? Yeah. Like literal ham? ham. Yeah. Literal ham, as in Parma. (laughs) Hello? Yeah, sorry, I didn't know know whether that meant something else. (laughs) Sorry. It's Parma. Is it actually made in Parma, the ham? Yes. Yeah, see, it makes sense. In Parma, we eat ham. It's like champagne got served, from France. We got served. Oh, did you hear that, though? Wait, what was that? <laughs> Are you winding me up? I just brushed <laughs> over it because I didn't know if you were taking the piss or not. <laughs> did you say it's from France? Like champagne from the place in France. Nope. It's literally named <laughs> after Parma Ham. Dimension stodgy. I was going to say, we're just going to blame the delay. There's a place in France called Champagne. No, I'm not actually joking. I'm not. I swear to God. <laughs> no, the Champagne region, yes. I didn't know it was called Champagne, though. I've heard of the Champagne region. Is that like a place, is it? Yeah. Where else is there? <laughs> Is we'll, Swiss cheese from Switzerland? We'll is make. It <laughs> is it Switzerland? Where else is that? 
Oh my Red god, Red Frank Fur. Frank, Frank Fur. Fur. Oh my god. Where else? The whole world is Wait, full is of food, man. <laughs> Red Leicester? Is it called Red Leicester, though, or is it just from Leicester? Because now I'm confused. Double, double Gloucester. There we go. We'll yeah, keep there's only one Gloucester, so I'm confused about that one as well. <laughs> Gouda is also a place. Gouda. Wow. I'm going to Google this after. Love Anyways. <laughs> We've completely we? taken the the biggest sidebar on a, like actually well structured rugby conversation that we've ever done. Sorry, but if there's anyone else out there that doesn't know that, can you just let me know? Because sometimes I feel really, really silly. But like, why would I know that? Like, why do you need? I to didn't know, know that. You I didn't know, know. the Champagne region. <laughs> You're just being nice. Oh, she Stop is me. just being sweet. Look at that. She's a good friend. Um, however, going back to Palmer. Yep. We were served a truckload of Parma ham at this post-match meal, like a truckload. It was a joke. It was everywhere. It was oh. good fun. Um, and then... Um, it was our second who... course. Yeah, it was our second course, just like, just ham. And Mo was like, why is there so much meat here? <laughs> <'Cause> I... <laughs> you told us that the second course was coming out soon, and then we sat down and they just put a plate of ham in front of us. It was mental. But the third course was an unbelievable bit of rolls. Anyway, we've digressed heavy there. Well, no, I was going to go on to tell you about the post-match function. Yes. Um, and so obviously we had some new caps. Paco got a hundredth cap. So basically that was the arena that they were going to perform on and sing their first cap or their hundredth cap or um, song. And I was sat next to um, Tunisi because some of the girls had split up. Go on, Mo. Can we tell the pack a bit first? So they mm -hmm. made Paco sing. And so she sings our first song. And then someone, one person goes, keep going. And then she proceeded to sing four more songs. Bear in mind, <laughs> we're like sat in with all the refs and everyone else. It was next level nuts. Like most people would just turn around and be like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. I've done my one. But she just kept going and kept going. Anyway, then Maddie did hers. Girls. So the girls have done theirs. Um, Packers done eight songs and you literally have to clap her off. <laughs> we're like, come on then, they're like you're trying to get the Italians going. They had a couple, they sing some Italian songs, obviously we're just like clapping along. Um, I'm sat next to Tinezi and they, um, Rigoni brings the mic over to her, puts it down on the table and she's like, no, 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 no. And I kind of, people are just, they've, they're over the singing now. And all of a sudden she picks up the mic and she just goes, this girl is on fire. But like, unbelievable. It was Not to really sound too good. dramatic, but it was, Pretty close to listening to whoever sings that song. Alicia Keys. Alicia? <laughs> yeah. Alicia Keys. <laughs> yeah. And they just used to sing the entire song. But like, obviously, you have the first bit is everyone's literally gone like this. I jumped out of my skin because I'm literally sat right next to her, but proceeds to sing this whole song. But then she doesn't know the English, does she? So she's like, <laughs> just like mumbles through the, and then like belts the chorus. It's it really, was so really, really funny. Very impressive. Um, on the topic of Party Packer, um, just going on and on and on, when she did go off in the Wales game, Sadia was captain. And I loved the quote that came out that she gave uh, where she said, Mitch just came up to her during the week in the lead up to that saying, uh, when Molly comes off, you're going to be captain. You don't need to do anything differently. We've chosen you for a reason. Explain. I don't know, obviously, the reasons that, that Mitch has picked up, but... Um... I think like she's been a part of this leadership group that he's picked from the start. One, she's bloody ridiculous player. Like I'm a big Sadio Kabir fan. And I think she's really starting to develop this other side of her. Obviously, she's one of those players that when you watch her play, you're like, yeah, fair enough. If you can do that, I could probably throw myself around a little bit too. Um, so there's a massive part of that. I think, you know, the bit around, you don't have to do anything differently. She's not the biggest talker, but I think it's definitely a role that she'll continue to grow into. And I suppose also when you think about it with her and Marley being our two sevens, in theory, one of them's probably always going to be on the field. So maybe there's something in that as well. But yeah, I mean... I don't know what our youngest captain would have ever been, but she's got to be pretty I close it. to it, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Just to be fair as well, the way she like throws herself around, I think she was 22 tackles again at the weekend and just leads by example always. And that's kind of what you want. Like you want somebody that you can follow into battle. So yeah, both of them together are pretty, pretty epic at that. Not a kicker of the ball. <laughs> There's, oh a moment, God, today. there's a today. moment in training today. We play this game that's like, the, the wrong way on the pitch so that the the width is the entire length in fact you get me it's like one touch turnover so obviously if you're near someone it, there's a bit of panic that happens 
And basically, Sadia's got the ball, someone's coming towards her, and everybody around her is shouting, kick it, kick it, kick it. And no single part of Sadia wants to kick this ball, can process that fast enough, or has the ability to, to do it naturally. <laughs> and what the outcome was something I've never seen before. It was like she didn't know what footage she was. She didn't know whether she should right or left. She didn't understand. <laughs> she didn't know what foot she was. And then she basically does this like death drop and just falls on the floor. <laughs> the ball bounces in between her legs as she's trying to swing both legs. I think she tries to swing both legs. That maybe that's what takes her out. But yeah, it was brilliant. She pulled an Alma. <laughs> yeah, good. great going. Yeah, yeah. Rugby ick. There we go. Um, <laughs> what what wasn't a rugby ick is the nineteen thousand seven hundred and five people who turned up for that Wales game at Ashton Gate. Bravo! We love seeing that record outside of Twickenham uh, for matches hosted in uh, England. Zoe's fiftieth cap, big moment as well. There, the kind of experience that you guys are now building up is it's a little wild. Um, <laughs> And then Ellie Kildam's finish. Chef's kiss. She's on fire. Yeah, she really is on fire. But yeah, it's unbelievable. And we're starting now to, like, I have to think quicker and scan more because I can't really hear what's going on. Because as soon as something good happens, like genuinely, the crowd absolutely erupts. And I, I'd say that's probably one of the loudest. I don't know whether it rivals what was in Twickenham, but even the girls were saying even 58,000 wasn't potentially as loud as that, or maybe we just can't remember. But yeah, it was absolutely mental. And you just have to process so much quicker because there's so much going on. But yeah, shout out to Zoe Class that she's got her 50th. Her um, Unreal. Burner came in to deliver her chat, which was actually really, really cool because uh, most people, they talk about their rugby journey and all this sort of stuff. And Zoe's was a lot of off-pitch stuff, which was really, really funny. Zoe was in a shell, like she hated it, but everyone else was enjoying <laughs> themselves. Yeah, like Ellie killed them, like unbelievable. She's... She's just a product of how she's training though. Like she's skinning people left, right and centre. So for then for her to go out and put performances in like that and to be able to get those finishes is epic. Love that. That's brilliant. Mm. And I love it for my fantasy league as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's I, got her sorry. in the team. I listened to the other pod, Elmo, where you said you'd put me as captain for Italy and you really should have consulted me because that was an awful, awful decision. Well, I, ju I just wanted to be like very loyal, but I won't do that again. Uh, I don't, I'm not bothered. I'm not precious. I'm not precious. Oh, worries, like... guys. She threw shade on me this week as well. I did complain to Mo because she didn't yield me enough points. Um, <laughs> and I, I sent her the screen drive and said, do better. Um, aren't you glad I don't <laughs> actually have any power because I'm obviously being a nightmare. And okay. also, we don't even, like, I don't know about you, guys, but I don't know what you get points for who like how you get the points what your prices are i don't i literally don't know anything about it so like i said to you unless we're on try assists or kicking meters for scazzy or something like that like don't even bother with us <laughs> yeah, i'm just gonna proceed with ellie stick with ellie kildan in ellie i yeah, trust yeah, yeah. Yes, so true. speaking of great hair katie daly mclean's scars party hat did you <laughs> see that what where you go with that then She's it's... saying Ellie has great hair. By yes, by the way. Yeah, but then I was like, on to Katie. Yeah. With the fringe. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, not Sammy Katie's hair. The fringe, <laughs> Daily McLean. Party hat. The party hat. She the won't fringe. come back. You called her the four wheel, fourth wheel and the fringe. She won't come back. She's got a great fringe. I wish I could wear one that well. There is just absolutely no hope on my five head. It looks weird. She <laughs> is still rocking that party hat. She's kept it. It's in immaculate shape. I don't know how because she wore it for a very long time last year. And it's I, coming back. I have no idea. But she wore it out all that night. She lives in a house with three small children and a dog. I, I just, I, don't, I have no idea how she's kept it like that. I think she's printed a load of her own. Sorry, is that the same hat or did you give her another? I just assumed you'd given her another. No. That's her own hat from that night. Yeah. yeah. And also, on the describing her as the fourth wheel, that is not an insult. The fifth wheel is an insult. All cars have four wheels. Can we just put that, yeah. like, <laughs> on the record as well? I, I love how close you came to the screen then. I felt like you were here. I'm ready to hide like someone. In my house and Why? I didn't even say it. Why is fourth wheel... All it missed was a, a wagging finger. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't understand why that is an expression. A fifth wheel is a bad thing. If you're the sixth oh, wheel, yeah. you're not even on board. Because it's like a third wheel is a bad thing. I just assumed fourth was even worse. Arguably, the fifth wheel is the steering wheel and that's the most important. Oh, so, look at yeah. that. <laughs> 
I have no knowledge of where Frankfurt is, but I think <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Frankfurter. No. Mrs. Frankfurter. <laughs> Not Do you want to be Mrs. Balmerham? Immediately. I don't want to be either of those things. Imagine the hat we could make. <laughs> Lots of sausages. <laughs> this is completely derailing. <laughs> Don't even bother. I'm gone. Imagine how we it's all I've got is a picture of the hat we could make and I can't. I can't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mrs. Steering Wheel is the fifth wheel. <laughs> Can we go back to the comment about your great posture and have you been keeping that in mind, straightening up, being uh, strong in battle? Way to bring me back down to earth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For those that aren't aware, obviously had that chat about how Mitch thought that I had big shoulders and I felt well pumped out. And then he saw you guys at the launch and he said to you guys that what he was, well, basically had that conversation with you. And then he came back to me and was like, hey, um, so Alma the other day. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he was like, yeah, we said about your, you having big shoulders. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, see, the joke is, I just meant that you needed to pull your shoulders back and that your posture was terrible. You I was, honestly, my little bubble around me just went pop. <laughs> I, yeah, no, it was very funny. I think I was, he's invested in uh, yeah. your great posture and you looking like power on the pitch. Yeah, but in all honesty, I am way more aware now. Like if, he, if he's around, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> pull those shoulders back, get K table across them. But no, I'm definitely I'm way more aware of it now for sure. That's good. And I won't be thinking that that's compliments ever again. I'll definitely be like, <laughs> okay, what does he actually mean? <laughs> I don't think it's all bad, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I also don't think fourth wheel is bad. So, I mean, I, I have the thickest, I'm the skin, like skin of a rhino. I also have the skin of a rhino because I saw the Jamie George posts and people complaining about Jamie George coming into camp, like chatting about how to what do What were they complaining outs. about? I saw people on Twitter complaining about this and I was like, guys. If Sia Kulisi turned up to a woman box training in his civvies on his day off and he just started like chatting ball with the girls, I would be buzzing about this. And also, if I talk about the work I do with a male colleague who works for the same organization and we're throwing ideas around on how to do things better, that's not a bad thing. That's people being on the same side. I think the thing is that people immediately jump to a conclusion, don't they? Whereas actually the, the truth of it was that he'd spoken to Mitch about it a numerous times and a while ago around wanting to come in um not even to help the girls like for himself do you know what i mean not and not in a selfish way but like it wasn't like uh him thinking he could really add some value or anything obviously he can and did but it was more just around him wanting to be around and i guess show his face but also see what we're up to um i think he said didn't he like see what i could learn from them as much as them from me um but yeah People. It's a knowledge exchange. You've spoken about this, Mo, where you have so much respect for Danny Kerr and the two of you play the, like the same position. And obviously there are things that are different, but there's also things that are the same. Yeah, 100%. And um, I've spoken to Jamie a bit through their campaign and he, he genuinely is the one that was driving it and wanted to come in. Like Skazi said, like he's chasing Mitch, like trying to see if the schedules align and, and wants to be there. And the girls got so much out of it. Like he changed the few drills that they were doing and obviously having a specialist coach, whether it's like in scrum half passing or whether it's um, hooker work or those really like niche positions, he's one of the best at what he does. Like, why would we not want to get that knowledge? It's crazy. I think Ben Youngs has said the same, like he's really keen to come in and do some nine stuff. So I think that's hopefully in the pipeline as well for some of us. But yeah, it's awesome when we've got people like that that want to come in and give a little bit back is, is class. So why wouldn't we want to jump at it? I also angered all of the uncles on over on X because I said if the Six Nations were decided by the men's and women's logs on aggregate, there'd be a lot more men turning up all over the place just trying to <laughs> yeah. invest as much energy and insight as they can in the greater good of the system. 
And what's changing about the men's captain's role is he's making it his own. He's the first one to do this. And I would love to applaud that vision for thinking about English rugby as a whole entity, not as the men's and the women's team in the benefit of one another. No. Yeah, 100%. I actually messaged him when he put our squad up and was like buzzing to see this or something. And I was like, oh, thank you. Like that means so much. He was like, don't be stupid. Like I'm actually genuinely really excited to see you girls. Like I really want to be in, like I'm going to try and do this. So like just to have that almost conversation about it as well and how much it means to them as much as how much when they play it means to us is huge. And yeah, long may it continue for sure. One team who is absolutely cruising because they lost 55 nil to France last year and then lost 515 to them yeah. in round two is and she's playing the silent bagpipe if you can't see it Scazzy is buzzing Scotland up next last time Scotland played England the score was 58 7 did you hear me ask them about that and then Emma Russell went aha but that doesn't mean anything. She actually had a lot to say, Skaz. Have you got any... Um, do you want to exercise your right of reply here? Leather trousers. <laughs> Why haven't you shown me these leather trousers? We haven't seen anything of that, guys. Ever. <laughs> ever. Is this like your love for Skaz? Your little love for it, ego? It's just a little Nottingham night out. It's just a little, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Why have we seen no photos? Where the, where's the photo evidence, mate? It was banned. Apparently was they the... were serving. <laughs> Skaz, for five marks, please explain the difference between serving and giving. Because you have no sister. You have no. I. <laughs> Look how I don't know where she is. I don't know where to start. Oh, you Just try. All, all, all I will say is I. <laughs> Don't mind one of those words, but the other, I, I just, I'm just not sure about it. I'm just not sure about, I like giving. I get giving. I get serving. What's the bit sure about, about that that you don't like? Just well, you know, it's just um, just uncomfortable, really. Okay, what bit? <laughs> Shut up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> However, I Wes always has a lot to say. She's very good value. I really enjoyed listening to that pod. The fact that she described my bum as a derriere was a bit <laughs> was a bit odd. But don't know why she was just getting in Rona's the kind of French vibes. Don't know. But yeah, um I don't I don't know really what to say about it. I do have a pair of leather trousers. I've worn them once. Will I wear them again? I'm unsure. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. If you can dress up like a gladiator and buddy the elf, you can definitely show off the derriere for a change. There should be balance in all these things. You can't just be down with being the goof. Sometimes you're just going to go, I have the asset <laughs> and I shall flaunt it. The goose. I can take the goose. Yes. We promise we'll we say it's giving, not serving. <laughs> <laughs> No one, no one tells Kaz she's serving anything. She's not yeah. serving, okay? Yeah. Just making that clear. Oh, um, and then... Excellent. I cannot wait for my grand to ask me about this. Cannot wait. Oh, Gran is going to definitely have is. thoughts. Shall I wear my um, my England, my Scotland hat <clears throat> and my Scotland... Oh, slip in the tongue. <laughs> slip in the tongue. <laughs> okay. She took her earphones out. She, she took her headphones out purposely. Yeah. I am wearing the most beautiful knitted Scottish hat with the thistle on the front. How are we feeling about Scotland? What threat do they pose? They're definitely a team that I have, like, they keep the ball in play a lot. So it's always a real, real hard test against them because they're super patient with what they do. They keep the ball loads and you really have to work at everything that you do. Obviously, they've proven how good they are at the minute like there's so much belief in that squad and we know how much they love each other and also how much they hate the English like <laughs> even in kit swaps and stuff I don't think you'll find any Scottish person ever swap kit unless they're Skaz and Waz probably are the only two no um, no Waz doesn't take they never take anything back yeah they'll let you have your shirt <laughs> but they won't I'll tell you I'll waggle my iPad down again I'll tell you oh, a Helen Nelson story right so we we're going to swap bobble hats so I had a Scottish bobble hat of Nels and I am um, Basically, I ended up having to offer her an Adidas hat as the return hat <laughs> because an England hat was not going to cut it. Not wearing that rose. Never, ever. Yeah. 
no, no you won't see it you won't see it but also like i think that's quite exciting because it always gives like a bit more spice and obviously we know so many of the girls like have so much time for so many of the girls and just think the absolute world of so many of them so to go into proper battle against people like that is awesome as well also i think um at home for them and a sellout hopefully but they're awesome at home it means so much to them um and when what's the song that plays just before kickoff because i love that song a flower of scotland no not the anthem <laughs> you plonker <laughs> Sorry, I thought that was well rude if you didn't know that, Scuzz. <laughs> What's the song? No, you, call yourself, you call yourself Scottish and you don't even know. That it's the one that it's called. I'll take the high road, you can take the low road. What's that called? Doc Loman. That's it. There we are. Gutted they didn't get their losing bonus point, but um, chuff for how well that they're going. They seem to have really... That was my noise for upward trajectory. Wow. We Welcome. we're honestly exploring You're some really new heights here. Today. Yeah. Sorry, Alma. I've spent the last three days with this girl and she's been bottling it up for this podcast. <laughs> I swear to God. She's been signing it. Okay. Well, um, good luck at the hive, uh, against that crowd. Uh good luck with the cold in Scotland. And then we'll see you after Bordeaux. Thank Amazing. you. We miss you guys. Keep doing great stuff. I've really enjoyed listening to the ones that we've done along the way. Turns out KDM's grey. Yeah. There's that fourth wheel. <laughs> You're carrying the scars. Thank you so much. We will see you soon. Yeah, thank you. See you all soon. Big love. Do you... Do you see what I mean, though, about the fourth wheel not being a bad thing? <laughs> I mean, I've been called the fourth wheel, the fifth wheel, and I think the sixth wheel was also mentioned. Um, so either I'm a really big wheel, like a big tire, you know, like a Land Rover tire that sits on the back, on the door. <laughs> the decorative one. Yeah, that, that's it. No the, one use. That, the one that makes it look tough. Okay, I'll take that. Tough. Mm. Er, er. She's still not comfortable with it. We're going to have to think of a better way of doing this. And what is it you would like us to call you when you come off the bench like you do and steal the show the way you do? You just try to save that. Off the bench? Well, I, I mean, want to be a starter, Elma. I, I want to be like in the main team. Like, the, not the, just the KDM the and the rugby. This has had a nice ring, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we got there eventually. We the got KD, there. The Daily and the McLean. And some rugby. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just be named the show can just be me. <laughs> Basically. The Katie show. Yeah, I think I'll be the steering wheel. Mo did save that. I mean, along with the other things she lost, her integrity, <laughs> dignity in that 20 minutes. But the steering wheel one was all right, wasn't it? Look, nothing will ever top Swiss cheese. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Champagne was pretty close as well. <laughs> I was so proud. And then she kept talking. I was like, oh, Mo. Oh. Scars nudger. Oh. Somebody save oh. her. Someone, stop it. We love it. And we will bring you more Mo moments and tons more <laughs> fifth wheeling uh, <laughs> as we go speaking of extra wheels on cars the bump in the road uh, documentary on avi ward's return to a uh, being a superstar rugby player off the back of a pregnancy i just want to take a moment to acknowledge that it's out on itvx and that you should go watch it to understand more of what that journey requires but that we also need to give vicky cornborough her flowers she had twins at a similar time to Abby. She is the other side of the coin because she has come out to announce her retirement because she says mentally she's just not ready. And I would like us to take a moment and say congratulations on a great career, Vicky. And also being a mom is an extreme sport in and of itself. We have covered this thoroughly with Dame Laura Kenny and all of the other conversations we've had on the topic of being a mom and being a pro rugby player, these two things almost obviously probably just don't go together well. If you manage it like Abby has, we love you for it. If you decide this is not your road anymore, mm. we will still celebrate you for the contribution you made to the game and completely acknowledge that this is an insanely difficult balancing act. 100%. And added to that, Vic had twins. So I think the dynamic of having one baby when you've got a load of support and care around you, but having to bring two babies into camp, potentially with 
another two adults. Oh. I can totally relate to it. I'm not sure I would have wanted to go back and play. Like my mindset had completely changed to being around family and kids and want to spend that time. And I, I, no, I've watched the documentary what that Abs and Dave did, and it's brilliant. And you know, she wants Hallie to have all those amazing mm. experiences that come with her mum doing what she's doing, and it's brilliant. But like you say, I don't think one size fits all. And you know, Vic played 75 times for England, front row in a very, very different position in a very different world. You know, worked, did a lot off the pitch. I think if anything, Vic should be congratulated for a lot of the stuff she did. That maternity policy and all the bits that came would have been due to a lot of the background work and mm. that Vic Cornbread put into our game. So like I say, you can one size fits all. I think it's amazing that she thought about it, and you know, she's been really honest to herself and and to her family. And I think sometimes that's even harder. Yeah. Yeah, um, and really brave. And we would like to celebrate the work that you've done and also say good luck with twins because that's an extreme, extreme, extreme sport. My husband is one of them. Hang in there. My father-in-law still got an ashen look on his face every now and again when we passed people with tiny twinnies in the shops and he'd go, wow, that was a lot. I took, went up to my parents this weekend and honestly, I think we took at least 10 years off their life. <laughs> we, we were Honestly, we were only there three days and I think I left my dad and he just looked the shell of the man yeah. when I arrived. He was, you, could, you could completely see him just sitting down for a bit quietly. Like, slumped in his chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so congratulations, uh, Vicky, on a great career. I want that to be mm. like the takeaway here. Then we quickly need to chat about the under 18s Six Nations. England lost to France in the final round of the tournament, played in Colwyn Bay in North Wales. 46-21, the final score there. Both teams were unbeaten going into that fixture. If you haven't been paying attention, it's fine. We got you. England had drawn with Italy, though, and France had won all of theirs. Their scrum half grew up in the same town as Caroline drew on. So, I mean, obviously there's something in the water there. How do we read this result, Katie Daly-McLean? I think it's it's fascinating. I think what we know is that French of all the French have always had really good age group teams. Like their twenties were always absolutely massive when you used mm. to play them. Like they'd been grown in some big factory and they just looked so much bigger than us. Um I think it's it's great to see, isn't it, you know, that you're talking about like basically an under eighteen Six Nations and mm. how cool is that for the development of the game for young girls potentially who are haven't started senior rugby about to maybe come into PWR or French National League, etc. Um and they're playing in these these games. I think for me it's it's an interesting one because you would say that England would be up there and would be really dominant. But like we know, French age group rugby is is pretty impressive. And there's a footnote at the bottom of a recent <laughs> story on the Club World Cup launching in 2028 mm. in the men's game about a Women's Champions Cup um, being added to the bill as well. And this Women's Champions Cup featuring, for example, also French clubs. So all of that talk that we have been talking about wondering about the standard of the French League and how that would sit next to the PW on if you could get those teams competing against one another. <gasps> it might actually be happening. It's very exciting, isn't it? Like you say, it's been talked about for such a long time and I think it'd be great, especially, you know, the French League. If I could have played anywhere else, that's where I probably would have that's gone. It. I would have gone over to France yeah. and just gone down to the south and like their rugby standard is good. There's a lot of investment in there. Mm. They've got good standard across the board. So it'll be fascinating to see, you know, the Montpelliers taking on potentially your Saris or your Gloucester Harpreys. Mm. Now that tournament, the under 18 Six Nations, trialled the use of a 4.5 rugby ball. It's a half size smaller than the size five that usually you play with in the men's and the women's game. Our producer Shira knows Ollie Perry, who's one of the England under 18 coaches and checked in with her on this uh, because she's a news hound and she just couldn't help herself. And Ollie said... I was quite unsure at first. I wondered if it was necessary, but you can't get away from the fact women have biologically, on average, smaller hands. From a skill point of view, I think with more time to adapt, it will benefit the game and the product as a consequence. If you look at the off game through the festival, it benefited the performance of all teams. I think I'd fly the flag for supporting size 4.5, but I still ask the question as to whether... It's another complexity that's needed. Do we need to specialise? Is it necessary, Katie Daly-McLean? I probably sit in the opposite camp to Ollie in this. I think there's been trials before 
mainly around the kick and stuff. I think if you've made a ball smaller and the weight stayed the same, how have you balanced that? As somebody sat and looked, you know, how the sweet spots change in the ball, so the bit of the middle of the ball that you're trying to kick to get the best connection. And I also wonder that if you start doing this, this then just goes to the top end of the game. It goes because it will cost money to trial a ball, to get a good four and a half ball. You know, everybody's played with a, a really cheap rugby ball and I, I worry that the four and a half just becomes that, you know, only the top richest clubs get the best balls and then everybody else just kind of gets left behind and you just prevent provide another barrier so while it is great and like you say for the attacking version of the game offloading hand size look i haven't got a massively big hand so it would have been great but i do think you've got to think about the implications for everybody else if you're in a remote part of south africa say are you in the only balls you get is what you get passed down from the men's side and now the women are playing with a four and a half how how do we still make sure that everybody's involved in our game because i think that's really important yeah accessibility and i've worked on content filmed with girls playing rugby in mexico and madagascar um and really far-flung parts of the pacific islands and you want anyone to just be able to pick yeah. a ball up and play and have the barrier to entry be as low yeah. as you possibly can so it would be good to have research point out what the real benefits, the true percentage, like the small margins are that you can win here, yeah. as opposed to, so that you can make a fair call on whether that rules people out of the game um, and whether the, the sacrifice is worth it. And I suppose the other fact about that from a kicking perspective is working with female kickers on that. Mm. It's making sure you're speaking to the top female kickers in the game around if we are going to do this, how that ball flies, the distance you can kick with it, and making sure that if we do come to this decision and we decide this is the way we're going to go, that we've explored every avenue, not just a couple of people have thought it's a really good idea and we've rolled with that. Because I think sometimes that maybe occasionally does happen in our sport. Yeah, sometimes we see studies come out and we just go, oh, well, you know, some scientists pulled over some data for a long time, so it must be objectively the truth and a universal fact. For example, uh, the conversation around the World Rugby Coaching Network that Alice Soper called out but eventually led to an apology. They could do a study here on this ball and find that it really affects hookers badly and they just can't throw the ball that well. And... We should look at it, but every time a study comes out and this World Rugby Coaching Framework, if you didn't see it, basically said that if you're a coaching, there are key areas of difference between men and women. For example, the base reaction for men is action and the base reaction for women is feeling. Katie, are you action or feeling? <laughs> Definitely more action. I think when the more I read it, the more I sit probably towards the men's side than the women's side. So on stress response, the one is fight or flight and the other one is tend and befriend. Yeah, I'm a f I'd probably be a fight. I'm also a fight. Like, Default straight fight. Into, yeah, straight like, in. Yeah. Very quick to that. Or get Katie to fight and I will just shout. But... The point on this coaching framework <laughs> is that there was a study that was published a very, very long time ago that they cited in a coaching framework that World Rugby issued. Yep. And then it took Alice Soper's uh, a very beady eye to quickly pick this up and go, this is absolutely offsides because it actually just doesn't bear out in practice. And if you have managed a team of people in any professional context anywhere in the world – you will probably have encountered women like Katie and I who are more on the the fight or flight and less on the tend and befriend side <laughs> of the spectrum. Tend and befriend. That. Tend and befriend. <laughs> Makes me feel uncomfortable saying it. Um, got I'm sure hands. someone felt very proud of themselves that they <laughs> found this expression and they made it rhyme as well. Uh, but World <laughs> Rugby, kudos to them, came out and said, this does not reflect our values and our known commitment to gender equality. And I think that is huge yeah. because in the past, so stuff like this would happen and there would be a little uproar and the news cycle would move on. And as an organisation, you could just quietly step back into the shadow and wait until a bigger drama found its way to the top of the headlines. It's a very brave move from an organisation to come out and issue an apology because there, there are people in all of these roles and this will be something that, that there's a superior somewhere that goes, geez, you really did drop the ball this week. Mm. Um and we do need to leave the door open for people to come back inside and say, we have learned from this. I think we can all suggest that when you're coaching teams, whether it's male, 
or female teams, you need to have a broad spectrum of skills to be able to realise that. Mean you might be similar, but some Mo probably is definitely more tend and befriend. Mm. Um, but mm. then probably Scazzy's probably hard wired to systemize. She probably isn't going to go and empathise. But no. I think that's about knowing your people. It's not necessarily being as yeah. black and white as going, well, you're a woman, so I need to do this, and you're a man, so I'm going to do this. Mm. Yeah. I think, like you say, the, probably the ball's just being dropped when people have thought about how this might be received. Yeah. Now, uh, our High Flyer of the Week segment is brought to you by our good friends at British Airways. Uh, with it being the Fala Week, we asked you, the fan, to pick out uh, the standout red rose from the opening two rounds of uh, the tournament. On our socials, we gave you the option of Zoe Oldcroft, Hannah Bottoman, and Ellie Kildun. Who would you go for out of those three? Katie Daly McLean. Do you know what it is? Zoe Elkoff, 50th cap was brilliant. Uh, I thought Bots was great, but for me, it's Ellie Kildun. And it's all about that finish. That finish, when we talk about ball size, Ellie Kildun didn't struggle holding a size five, did she, when she finished in the corner? Looks at the scoreboard. Yeah. The results speak for themselves, and the fans agree with you. Uh, congratulations. Woo! Our high flyer of the week is Ellie Kildun. Uh, thanks again to our friends at British Airways. To feel inspired for your next adventure, head to BA.com. Now, it's been two weeks of waiting. The good news for you is the wait is very nearly over. Round three, Scotland, England at 2.15pm from the Hive Stadium in Edinburgh will be live on the BBC. I will uh, not be wearing uh, Scotland colours because people's feelings were so hurt. The Scotland scarf is here on, on the set, though, so it's waiting for them when they come back. Uh, what threat do these Scottish girls pose, England? And what should Scottish fans be looking for? For outside of a good performance from their team? Yeah, I think we can't get hung up on the result. I think for me, it's not about the result. It's about Scotland building on what they did against France. Brian talked about, didn't he, that he felt like they missed some opportunities, that they weren't clinical enough. And I think for me, if Scotland can get a good start, if it's potentially not as windy and as wild and windy as it was when they played France, you know, allows Helen Nelson to kick the ball and to give them a bit of territory, build into the game. I think that can maybe unsettle England because I think they're just used to playing against Scotland, putting a big score on them and almost kind of jobs done. But I think if we see a, a loose England like we did against Italy where they don't look after possession and they let Scotland in, like we know Scotland are full of confidence. They're going well and I think... If you're them, you've got no fear. There's always going to be a year at some point, and I wonder if they're starting to believe maybe this is theirs. 58-7 was the score last year between these two sides. Uh, this time it is on Scottish turf, and if anyone can play those conditions, you'd hope that it would be the Scottish girls. You could, but I think England have so many kickers across their back line, regardless of who they pick for that Scotland team, whereas realistically you're looking at Helen Nelson or you're looking at Lisa Thompson, and mm. that's if she's available yeah. being away with Hong Kong and I just in Hong Kong 10 7 sorry um so I just think it if you're England and you can shut Nelly down then it becomes hard for Scotland to get territory and what Scotland can't do is they can't stay camped in their half for long periods because England will just squeeze them their physicality will come to the forefront and for me that's the big difference I still think England have that physical edge in terms of being able to dominate the opposition for 80 minutes you know Scotland have got a really good 15 but probably the bench are still you know Abby Fleming it was first cap has only been playing for Edinburgh Uni I think hasn't been playing as much league rugby so they've still got a way to go to really kind of have a a 30 plus squad whereas you would probably argue England now have a, a really strong 23 and extras that won't be included. Let's see who made the most of uh, the Fallow week. The next game on the menu on Saturday, Ireland-Wales, 4.45 uh, from Musgrave Park in Cork. Must win for both of these teams. Ireland lost to France and Italy. Wales have lost to Scotland and England. We can't make a judgment because they haven't played the same teams. Mm. Um, but what have we learnt I think the pressure's massively on Wales. I think Wales will go into this as, as favourites. I think for for this season or for the Six Nations, it, for Ireland, it was all about just being better than they were and really starting to put a mark in the sand, which I think they've done. You know, that game against Italy was was so, so close and came down to one score. But I think the pressure really is on Wales. Haven't been in WXV1. You know, these results now will really count. And I think if you're Johan Cunningham, you probably feel that you, your team needs to get a result. You know, Ireland at home in Cork, they're mm. moving around. They had a massive crowd against Italy. I'd be I'd be nervous if I was 
Wales at the moment. The pressure is on. Yeah, Ireland, Italy, 6,605 people in attendance. Shout out to them. Shout out also to Cleana Maloney. Mm. The prodigal daughter returns. She's been in exile. Um, if you're new to the party, she had thoughts that she expressed and uh, crazy she was quite outspoken about the way things were being done in ireland previously then she went unselected and for a long time people looked over in cleana maloney's direction and went when is she gonna have a, a look back in i was just gonna say i think on her thoughts her thoughts were probably fair and accurate and a representation of a lot of other people's thoughts as well i think that's a bit that gets missed i think sometimes you talk about cleana maloney and they're like almost like oh she said this, but actually what she was saying at the time was fairly accurate about what was happening in Irish rugby for the women. And she kind of got hung out to dry a little bit, didn't she, in, in my opinion. I'm not sure she was as supported as potentially as well as she could have been. Meg Jones came out on Twitter in support and said, clear epitomizes what it means to stand up yep. for what you believe in. People's champion, I'm here for this news, go well, Maka. Love that and, and you know what, Meg strikes me as the kind of person who, if she had been the person in that situation, would have also stuck her neck all the way out. Yeah, look, it is, it's hard, isn't it? When you want to play for your country and you get caught in that position where, is it saying what you believe in or still wanting to represent your country, it's really typical. And I think, you know, Meg is a, Meg is a good egg and you're probably right there that she would be one who's in the corner and wants everything to be done properly. So, But it's great to see her back, isn't it? Hopefully she, we see her this weekend because I think Ireland need more of that. She brings so much experience, but she also brings a load of fight and a load of edge and they're going to need that against Wales. And that is what makes her being recalled back into the squad a really interesting move because it does make you want what that says about the culture and the atmosphere and the vibe because <laughs> this girl is not going to stick around if she has not seen sufficient change and shift. Uh, Sunday, France play Italy at 12.30 at Stade Jean Bouin Ooh. in Paris. And more good news uh, is confirmation of rumours that um, I feel Nick Heath gave us the scoopy scoopy on this previously. Uh, England will play the Black Ferns, number one and two in the world at Twickenham in mid-September. A standalone fixture. Look at that. And you'll be able to see the best uh, women's players in the world according to the current uh, rankings in action. If you would like to come on down to Twickenham, come and join us. Bill Sweeney, the chief executive of the RFU, said if you look at women's sport, what's happening with the Lionesses in football, and you see it across cricket as well. Women's sport is here to stay and we need to make sure it grows as quickly as possible. Also, we would like money. So uh, here is a property that we will unlock Twickenham for. Uh, because as it turns out, we can actually, you know, make the thing quite full. It's like, welcome, welcome, Bill. Nice of you to join us. Yeah. Um, I do think people need to stop going, oh, we want to grow the game. Yes, we would also like to make the money. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's fair, isn't it? Yes. Okay. It is fair. Good. They've just realised that actually not opening Twickenham, there's going to be more than 10,000 now. Yeah. Haven't they? So that, oh, oh, oh. I got an idea, oh, guys. Do you know what? We should get some portaloos in <laughs> because we're going to have uh, many ladies in here. <laughs> and maybe some tissues as well because they maybe might cry. some tissues and then we will have Swiss cheese on the menu and parma ham <laughs> and sausages and, sauce and frankfurter and we will be tend and befriend <laughs> one and all there we go these are the rules of women's rugby when, once Katie Danny McLean collects herself I will say thank you for coming down from Manchester <laughs> can we just point out that this is actually fact when I even make this up Tendon, tend and befriend, Katie. Remember. If you have a Scottish friend, tend and befriend there as well. into Mo. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will take our silliness home now. It has been a joy, as always, to have you on our steering wheel. Thank you. You're a lovely addition to the project. Thank you so much for lending us your ears. Uh, the Good Discuss the Rugby is brought to you by our friends at Vodafone. It is a folding pocket production. And as always, uh, the brain behind it all is our producer, Shara Kilgallen. Yeah.